Well, that sound can only mean one thing. It's uh, profile time. <laughs> There's bats in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear. The profile is Dennis Nicholas Maria Burkamp. Oh. Maria! <laughs> I thought that would uh, struck a chord with you. Born 10th of May, 1969, just before the summer of love. He's <laughs> won the sperm race. He has. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know he was named after the famous Manchester United player Dennis Law? Oh, was he? Oh, D- spelt differently then? It is, yes. But in uh, in Dutch, if you spelt it with one N, it would be too near Denise. OK. So they put the extra N in there to, to man beef it up. Uh, his family were Manchester United fans, but Dennis Burkamp always admired Glenn Hoddle of Spurs the most. Mm. He said that uh, other <clears> players will tell you Pele, Maradona or Cruyff are their idols, but I will say Glenn Hoddle. People often assume he's a Spurs fan because of that, but he's not. And Burkamp was brought up through the uh, Ajax famous youth system and he joined the club at 12 years old. To begin with, though, they thought Burkamp was too lightweight and not physically strong enough for football and he, he struggled a bit in the youth team but after a few years uh, Johan Cruyff came along and he discovered Burkham's talent and he took him away from the junior team and put him in the first team and his first league game was in December 86 and he soon became a regular in the, the Ajax side uh, they won the Dutch league in, in 1990 the, they won the UEFA Cup in 92 very respectable they won the Dutch Cup in 93 and from 91 to 93 Burkamp was top scorer in the league because you often think of Burkamp and you don't actually think he was the most prestigious mm, of goal scorers no. but in the early days you know top scorer in the Dutch league as I say and he was voted the Dutch player of the year in 92 and 93 and all in all he scored 122 goals in 239 games for Ajax that's not too shabby at all for, and for a guy who was as more of a support striker as yeah. we know him to be you know decent in 1993, he signed for Inter for, for £12 million. Um, Wasn't he Inter's greatest ever player? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he went with... Uh, I'm not having a go at him because it's a profile. No, There's no, no place for that in the profile. I was going to say... You Carnu keep... and Robbie Keane are in his greatest players anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true, sorry. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. But to, to put it in context, when he was signed for £12 million, he was the second most expensive player in the world at the time. Mm. Johan Cruyff uh, was very surprised and actually disapproved of the move because Inter were a bit more defensive type of side. And, but Burkamp wanted a challenge and he chose Inter over clubs like Milan and, uh, and Barcelona where there was more attacking so it was a bit of a surprise he went there he won the UEFA Cup though with Inter which I think was his only honour there but uh, he stayed in Italy for two seasons and as Croft predicted he d- had a very difficult time there they promised him a kind of a, a change of style actually when he arrived but they d- it didn't quite happen and he didn't get on so well with his uh, with his teammates I think Ruben Sosa certainly treated him as a rival rather than a colleague there was a little bit of uh, animosity there and he didn't have a great time with the Italian press either but Bruce Rioch rescued him Mm. Bruce Rick did did rescue him. So in, in fifty two games, uh, fifty two appearances for for Inter, he scored eleven goals. So not not the best wow. time. But uh, Bruce Rick, you're right, came along in in June ninety five and signed him for seven and a half million. It took him. I think people forget it actually took a, a little while, n- not too long, but it did take a little while for him to yeah. adapt. Well, there was the a big thing. It took him a while to score, didn't it? He it got did take him two in one game against Southampton, I believe. Do you That's remember right. him signing for like, Arsenal, Jim? Yeah. I was in Las Vegas when he signed for them. What year was it? 90... 95. Oh, was it that early? God. Yeah. I mean, possibly one of the greatest players to have played in the Premier League. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 um, he, he won the Premier League. He, he, he won the, the FA Cup. It was the double in 97, 98. I mean, he was voted PFA Player of the Year. And it, this is in September 97, he became the first and so far only player to have come first, second and third in Match of the Day's Goal of the Month competition. That's <laughs> class. And that was all from the same game, wasn't it? It was the same game, the hat-trick against Leicester City. <laughs> oh, I remember that hat trick. Glorious. What a hat trick that was. Uh, Bergkamp was one of those sort of few players who genuinely could take your breath away. You know, yeah, yeah. For, uh, international level and at club. The, level, for yeah. me, my favourite Dennis Bergkamp goal is is not from the Leicester game, but it's the, against Newcastle actually. Yeah, where, um, where they're sort of discussing whether he, he meant it or not. Yeah, I, I, I think from his body language, it does certainly look like he meant, he meant it. it. Yeah, yeah, but the way he's, he actually doesn't, because if he if he didn't mean it, his eyes would have followed where the ball went. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't. He just goes bump, does it, and turns round, and he's in his face it looks as though it's, it's like, oh. expecting it to be yeah. yeah I thought it was Pires who said if you if you doubt if you doubt that that wasn't meant then you don't know you don't know him well enough you don't mm-hmm. know yeah. what he's like you know he won the double again in, in 2002 with Arsenal and uh, he won again the FA Cup in 2003 and the Premier League for a third time in 2004 he unfortunately never won a European trophy with Arsenal he got to the UEFA Cup final in 2000 when they were beaten by Galatasaray on penalties and of course um, he was uh, well he was an unused substitute in uh, in 2006 Champions League final against Barcelona what was a nice touch by Arsenal was that uh, on the 16th of April 2006, uh, which was a home match against West Bromwich Albion, the Arsenal supporters dedicated the day, to, to Dennis Burkham Day, yeah. to commemorate his time at Arsenal. He scored as well in that game. He did score, and it was a lovely little one, mm. um, <laughs> Jamie Redknapp said. Um, <laughs> 
So and that, that was a brilliant, and that was his last goal for Arsenal, which was uh, a fitting way to score mm. on, on the day dedicated to him yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in the last minute as well. He retired, as I said, after the, the Champions League final. So all in all, Burkamp scored 120 goals in, in 424 appearances and set up 166 goals in his Arsenal career, which makes him the top assist uh, maker in Premier League history. That's outrageous. Wow. <laughs> that is a magnificent... And, yeah. and, and that really, really needs to be said because, yes, he's, we've said earlier, he's, he wasn't the most pr- prolific of scorers, but what he brought... Mm. To the team, yeah. it's just unprecedented. He's he's a seems, player, he seems yeah. for a while. He seems to go like a season on, season off. I remember he'd get like twenty, twenty-five one season, then he'd get eight or nine the next. But he'd obviously he was making loads the whole time. It was he's funny the way a that worked. Wonderful out. player, unplayable when he was yeah. on form. Yeah, you know, completely unplayable. His first major tournament was Euro '92, where they lost on penalties to Denmark in the semi-final, and then of course they got to the quarter-final in, in 1994 in, in USA. But I'm sure we all remember the moment in '98 against Argentina in the quarter-final, mm. where uh, which was intriguingly. The commentary, the Dutch commentary, was played at the end of the last show, wasn't it, Peter? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was surfing for something else. I was trying to find something else, and I found that. Why not? A lovely bit of work. Just whack it in there. And I was like, the goal where he's sort of trying to break down at the end. He shinned it and sort of sliced it in. I think it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not bad. Frank de Boer just humped a ball up to him. De Boer, de Boer, de Boer, and then it was Burkham, Burkham. This Burkham, this Burkham. That one. Yeah. He nutmegged Roberto Ayala on that goal. He not. He caressed the ball down and just touched it through his legs. That's class, isn't it? Such a like the greatest first touch I've ever <laughs> yeah, seen. Yeah, it's yeah. Unbelievable. But yeah. that that goal was so good, and it's rare that the, the commentary matched it. Yeah, with Barry Davis. He was, just, he was, yeah, he was like. You know, we've said a while ago on the show we talked about our favourite commentary moments. So mine was Barry Davis on that goal. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, Davis couldn't believe his yeah. luck. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Pearce, incidentally, because obviously Argentina had eliminated England. He goes, Dennis Bergkamp has scored and surely put out Argentina and good bloody riddance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, non- non-biased. Yeah. That's class. Um, <laughs> you gotta love that. That is yeah. funny. Yeah. And he and 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 what was even better as well about that goal is his, he he became the Dutch top scorer of all time, which was a record held by uh, Fast Wilkes with that goal. Oh, Clark! So, uh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Uh, unfortunately, he after Euro two thousand when the Dutch reached the semi-finals, he he knew he wouldn't be able to travel to Japan and Korea because of his fear of flying, which um, I think has been such a big hindrance on Arsenal in Europe. Yeah, yeah, he couldn't go to away games for a while, could he? Yeah, would he drive? But obviously, like he'd get there and be exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it'd exactly. just be Mental. If they were away in Turkey or something, that's yeah. not really an option. Yeah, um, <laughs> so well, that is mental, isn't it? Well, <laughs> how many other players like uh, would not fly? Mr. T. It's almost like the sun tricked him into doing it, just so they could call him the non-flying Dutchman. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Poor. He well, should have uh, hit the therapy or something like that. It's well, but, but apparently his um, fear of flying developed after the Dutch squad were involved in an incident concerning their flight to the World Cup in 1994 to America, and they were they were with a group of journalists, and, and so, some of them some of the journalists started making remarks about the long wait, wondering if there was a bomb on the plane and all this kind of stuff, and it just provoked a big panic amongst the passengers, and, and in particular Burkamp. Apparently, I mean, it, it, it reminded Burkamp of a plane crash which killed many um, Surinamese Dutch players when they flew to Suriname, and it all kind of just escalated so it, I always thought it was actually something happened on board the plane but it wasn't it was it's oh, a bit of an oh, odd yeah. one it's, mm. it's, it's an obvious just, idea, just sort of it? it's accumulated because yeah, you get a lot of people yeah. who are a little bit scared of flying but I mean yeah. we wouldn't go to that length I mean, the no. fact that he's gone to that length he's basically almost arguably could cost him European glory yeah career, I, mean, I mean it's, it would have made a, a difference it's a shame. Mm. But in May 2008, he began a fast-track coaching diploma, studying under Arsene Wenger in London, I think. But he's, he's got a trainee role at Ajax. Yeah. But Hunter he's, just, he's a striker's coach at Ajax now, isn't he? Didn't Hunter say something? Well, Hunter didn't want to leave Ajax for that reason. He said he wanted to stay under... Was it Van Basten and Bergkamp which mm. was, was the coaching sort of set up? Mm. Obviously, he did leave in the end. But yeah, but I mean, I'm not sure if Bergkamp is going to become, will be an Ajax manager in the near future. I mean, possibly. Yeah. You know, he's got, mm. he's, he's spent a lot of I time think he's there. going about it the right way. Wasn't he man- managing the Dutch B side or assistant yeah, management? Right. Yeah, he was managing yeah. them as well. Yeah. Like, I think it's wise to get those sort of assistance roles under your belt and just. Yeah, you know, yeah totally. I think it's fantastic when genuinely great players want to stay in the game. Yeah, yeah. I've read something about Paul Scholes today saying he wants to stay in the game as well when he retires. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll end with, I've, I've got a couple of quotes here. Arsene Wenger said, Intelligence and class. Class is, of course, most of the time linked to what you can do with the ball, but the intelligence makes you use the technique in an effective way. It's like somebody who has a big vocabulary but doesn't say intelligent words, and someone who has a big vocabulary but doesn't talk intelligently. And that's what Dennis is all about. 
what he does, <laughs> there's always a head and always a brain, and his technique allows him to do what he sees and what he decides to do. Thierry Henry and Ian Wright say he's... I mean, Ian Wright, you said he's the messiah. <laughs> which is... Ian uh, Wright is a lot of it. Yeah, but good, Thierry, Henry nice said he's, balanced opinion. Thierry Henry said he's the best player that he's ever played with. Never mind, he's played with Zidane and people yeah, like yeah. that, you yeah, know. Yeah. In, in April 2006, Simon Cooper in the Financial Times wrote, One night last year, some legends of Dutch football gathered for dinner in an Amsterdam house. Around midnight, conversation turned to an old question. Who was the du- best Dutch footballer ever? Dutchmen have been voted European Footballer of the Year seven times, which is more than any nationality except for Germany. Jan Mulder, a great centre forward turned writer, said Burkamp, he had the finest technique. Gus Hiddink, the great Dutch manager, nodded, and so the matter was settled. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Burkamp. In he comes. In you come. There's Burkamp. There's Burkamp. There's Burkamp.